a football fan Or you like desperate dance If you're a bit of a cook Or you like a good book, don't delay To have your say yes, yes. Do, do it right away Right away, right away yes, yes. Mallory Blackman is really famous for writing exciting stories. She knows a thing or two about beginnings, middles and endings. In fact, I think she's magic. Hi, sir. I believe you're looking for a fairy godmother. Yes, I've got to write a proper story with the beginning and with the end. But I really don't know where to begin. Well, I always think a really good place to start is when something's about to change. So let's have a look at the original story. Okay. Right, now, can you tell me about the beginning of Cinderella? How does that start? The two ugly sisters and Cinderella's stepmother find out that there's a ball and they all get tickets and Cinderella's really excited. But the stepmother and um, the two ugly sisters say, you can't go because you don't have any clothes to wear. So she gets the invitation to the ball, so she's happy, but then they tell her she can't go, so she's really unhappy. So let's talk about your story, Cinders 2. Where, where do you think that might change? What does it how does it start and then how does it change? Um, Prince um, Charming and Cinderella are just living in their castle happily ever after. Okay, and then what happens? Um, maybe the two ugly sisters come along and... Um, say, can we live with you for a while or something? Oh, like that's that. a good way. And that's a change in itself, isn't it? Because then you've got Prince Charming and Cinderella, and they're very happy. And then the ugly sisters turn up. I like that beginning. That's a really good one. Once upon a time, Cinderella and Prince Charming were very, very happy. Their favourite place in the whole world was the dining room on the second floor of their castle. Chin chin. A great view, my sweet. Thank you. How very charming of you. I'm so happy, PC dearest. Chin chin. Meanwhile, the ugly sisters were very, very cross at being treated by their sister. <laughs> They set off for Prince Charming's castle with a secret plan. Help! 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 Don't go! I've got a feeling I know who it is. It's my sisters. Hello! Remember us? We've had the most terrible thing happen to us, haven't we, sister? Absolutely terrible. Our dear mother is dead. <laughs> We're homeless, without a friend in the world. We were wondering if maybe we could come and stay for a few days. It's your poor sisters, dearest. They've come to pay us a visit. Oh, no. Do you think the ugly sisters could come and pay us a visit, Mousie? No, I don't, Larry. The point... <sighs> is that the beginning of a story needs to start with a change. So, if at the beginning the main character is happy, then something needs to happen which will make them unhappy. That's the sort of thing, Larry. Oh, and what happens next? The middle, Larry. Well, for our middle section, it's always good to make sure that things get worse before they get better. So in our original story, things got worse before they got better, didn't they? Because she was really happy, fairy godmother arrived and she could go to the ball. But then, the clock struck midnight and she had to run away from the prince. Things are really bad, aren't they? So that's a really good way of, of thinking about the middle, our middle section. So what could happen in the middle of Cinders 2, do you think? Um, Cinderella and um, Prince Charm start to argue. But then what happens? What, what actually happens that make it, to make it worse? Um, the um, ugly sisters say, can you show us the dungeons? And they go, yes. Mm. And then the ugly sisters run out and shut the door on them and lock them in. Oh, so you think they'd lock them in the dungeon yeah. and they'd be stuck in there. Oh, that would be terrible. So, and then it's, how are they going to get out of this one? I like that. That's a really good end to our middle, isn't it? 
very soon the ugly sisters were almost running the place. Prince Tran was completely taken in by their flattering ways and Cinders was made to be a servant again. So charming, he's so charming, isn't he sis? Absolutely. We were wondering, since it looks like we'll be here for a while, if we can make ourselves helpful. You know, polish your treasure, count your money bag, sign a few official forms for you. Only the least important ones, of course. Don't you dare, I'll never speak to you again. How very unkind. Look, I'm sure it won't do any harm, dear. I'll be delighted if you polish my treasure. It's down the corridor, second on the right. <laughs> to divorce Cinderella and marry her charming sisters. Signed, Charming. Sign here, please. There we are. Now all we need is a piece of rope. Now look here, what I say goes. I must be boss in my own house. You're just jealous. Jealous of those two? You must be joking. If they were the last people on earth, I wouldn't be jealous of them. <laughs> For you, my dear sister, this is the beginning of the end. Oh dear, they are in a pickle, aren't they? Well, yes they are, Larry. That's because in the middle, it's a good idea for things to get worse before they can get better. I suppose that's because if things get more difficult, it keeps you interested in the story. Yes, that's right, Larry. You want to see what's going to happen next. Do you think things are going to get better at the end of this story, Mousie? Fortunately, Larry, they often do. So we've got our beginning and we've got our middle and now we've got to think about our ending and what we want is a really exciting finish and maybe even a surprise at the end. I read a version once of Cinderella where he went to the ugly sister's house and one of the ugly sisters actually cut off her toes so that yeah. her foot would fit into yeah. the slipper. So that's quite unexpected, isn't it? And then he goes, he thinks, oh, oh, she's the one I fell in love with. And then he, he goes off with her. But then luckily he notices that she cut her toes off and then he goes back and finds a real Cinderella. So that makes that a really exciting ending, doesn't it? Because we weren't quite sure whether he, the prince was going to be fooled or not. So let's see how we can apply that to Cinders too. Now, what sort of things could we have there? A really exciting finish. Um, they might get locked in the dungeon and never come out. Or maybe they could try and fight their way out of the castle. Mm. Or maybe they come up with a plan to try and escape from the castle. So whatever you choose to do, you have to try and make it an exciting ending that people will want to read the next page and find out what's going to happen. Keep them guessing, I would say. So it's up to you, Seth, which ending you choose. Right, good luck. Thank you, Mallory. Mallory? How are you? The ugly sisters imprisoned Prince Charming in his treasure room and started to treat Cinders very badly. Prince Charming heard their cruel treatment and realising how much he really loved Cinderella, he decided to rescue her. Prisoner at the bar. You have been accused of great cruelty to your dear sweet sisters. The penalty, as you know, is death. How do you plead? Guilty, Your Honour. The jury found you guilty as charged. All that remains is for me to pronounce sentence. I sentence you to be taken to a place of execution and... You 
can't do this. You're my wife. Well, sweetheart, was your wife. You're married to them now. You signed it yourself. Charming. What a great ending. And that's because it kept us guessing, Larry. Yes, Mousy. I had no idea what was going to happen. Oh, look. Seth's reading his story to his mum now. That's really good, Seth. Read me some more. The Aki sisters and I think he'll get his TV. Hi, Seth. What are you watching? Well done, Seth. Seth's story was brilliant, wasn't it, Mousy? Yes, and that's because it had a proper beginning, middle and ending. It began with a change. In the middle, things went from bad to worse. And the ending was really unexpected. Yes, Larry, and that's the end for us too. Until next week. And remember... We're, We're the, the Writing, writing Rescuers! <laughs> <laughs> And, and you could be in my story. Well, of course I'll be in your story, but you write, you couldn't write the beginning. Well, I tried. Oh, you like a good book, don't delay. To have your say, yeah, do it right away. Right away, yeah, do it right away. Give your mates a scare. Tell them you really care. Have you had a good day? Wanna have your say? Don't delay. Right away, yeah, do it right away. Right away, yeah, do it right away. Right away. Right away. What's the writing challenge today, Mousy? Today, Larry, we're helping someone write a play. Oh, I've always wanted to be in a play. Really? You do surprise me sometimes, Larry. If you're writing a play and don't know what to say, we'll, we'll be, be here, here to save the day. day. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> Amber loves play acting and she never misses a chance to be really dramatic. Oh, my leg! Please help me! Come on, Amber! Oh, Amber, what a performance! Well done, Amber! Bravo! Thank you, Mousy! Bravo! Bravo! Love Amber's writing a play that she's going to put on in front of the whole school. Scene one. Waiting for Tom. Let's see how the first rehearsal goes. OK, is everybody ready? OK. Cue Lisa. I like my room because it has a great view over the street. <sighs> The weather's not been good recently. Lots of rain and mist. Um, I had chips and sausages for tea last night, uh, but Mum had run out of tomato sauce. Uh, this morning I had boiled eggs and soldiers for breakfast. I love them. Uh, this script is awful! What am I going to do? Oh dear. Amber's play is really boring. I think she needs our help, Mousy. Writing rescuers to the rescue! <laughs> Luckily for Amber, I know just the person to help her. David Wood is really famous for writing plays 
based on brilliant stories like the Big Friendly Giant, the Megan Mog Show and Noddy. And you're that David Wood fella? I see one of your plays the other day, it was absolutely brilliant. Well that's very kind, thank you very much. A man of great taste, hmm? David's on his way to rehearsals for his play, The Gingerbread Man. Ooh, how exciting. Hello. Oh, hi. You must be Amber. Yes, yeah? I'm Amber. Elsie well, tells me you need some help with your play. Yep. Yep, is this it? Yep, that's it. Oh, well, it looks fun to me. Come on, let's go and talk about it. Okay. This way. Here we are, Amber. We're in the theatre. This is the Theatre Museum Theatre. There are the actors. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Now, let's go and sit down over there, shall we? Yeah. Sit on that one. Good. Now, Amber, if your play's going to be fun, you're going to need some scenes. What do you mean by that? Well, it's more interesting if things happen in different places. Ta-da! Ta now, in real life, you go from place to place. But in a play, you can just go to the exciting places without having to get there. Let's have a look. Scene one, at the fountain. Scene two, inside the cave. Scene three, outside the palace. And when it's the end... The curtain comes down to thunderous applause! Yeah! <laughs> so when you're writing a play, you need to include different scenes. Yes, Larry. And the scenes of a play are like the chapters of a book. Each scene moves the play on to the next important bit. You can even have two scenes where different things are happening at the same time. For example, scene one. Larry was walking in the country looking for some fresh fruit. Scene two. Meanwhile, Mousy was in town shopping for some cheese. Her favourite food. <laughs> scene three. Later, they met in the woods. To eat by the light of the moon. <sighs> so different scenes will make your play more interesting. But in a good play, there's always something going on, something happening. It's not just people talking. Mm -hmm. To tell the story, you can have things happening as well. Now, in my play, the action takes place on kitchen shelves. In rehearsals, we don't use the real scenery, but we got boxes to be the teapot, the bottles and the honeypot. In this scene that I've written, we're on the shelf of a dresser. And there's the teapot, the old tea bags in there. And she doesn't want the gingerbread man who's coming up to get the honey. Oh, can I read what happens? Yeah. Sure, Mousy. Come on. There we are. OK, let's stand by then, please. And... Cue! The gingerbread man sets off towards the honey, treading on tiptoe. Suddenly, the door of the teapot creaks open and Old Bag peeps out and starts stalking the gingerbread man. He reaches the honey and starts taking the lid off. Is there somebody behind me? There's that! Yes. Look! He turns, but Old Bag is too quick for him. Old Bag creeps out again. Is there somebody behind me? Look there! Look at her, she's, she's there! there. <laughs> he turns suddenly and sees Old Bag surprising her at the same time. Both scream and run to hide in opposite directions. They re-emerge and start creeping. Gingerbread Man never seeing Old Bag and Old Bag never seeing Gingerbread Man until they bump Whoa! into each other. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's very good. So when you write a play, Larry, as well as having different scenes, you need action! Yeah! Oh, I see, Mousy. So a good play isn't only about talking, it's about things happening. That's right! And when you write
to play. Mm. Oh, oh, you have to write down what's going to happen on the stage, as well as what the actors say to each other. I think you can stop the action now, Mousy. Oh. 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 <sighs> so, Amber, you need things happening in the play, but you need people talking too. I have got speech in my play though. Yeah, well that's good, but uh, you need people listening. So that one person says something and one person listens. And then that person says something and the other person listens. Show you what I mean. Stand by everybody and cue! Who are you? The sh sh gingerbread man! Never heard of you. I was only baked yesterday by the big ones. You're trespassing. But this is my shelf. But, but this is an emergency. Hevon Cuckoo. What about him? He's lost his voice. You mean he can't cook her? Yes, I mean, no. <laughs> so I thought. What did you think? I thought I could get him some honey. It might help him. You thought wrong. I'm glad. Delighted he's lost his voice. I've always hated that stupid noise every hour of the day and night. Cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. But the big ones might throw him in the dustbin. Oh, good riddance. And good riddance to you too. Clear off. And you can clear off too. All of you. That was a good scene, wasn't it, Mousy? Yes, Larry. And that's because the actors were talking to, to each, each other. One person said something and, and then... And then the other one replied. One of them was listening and... And the then the other one was listening, just like you. And me, Larry. Here we are. There you go. Yep. Very good luck with your play, Amber. Thank you, David. Bye. 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 And now Amber's off to rewrite her play. Amber's play. Scene one. Waiting for Tom. Lisa's bedroom. Lisa on bed. Flicking through magazines. Mum's these days. I'll get it! It should be Tom. Psst, Amber, how's it going? It's going really well. Hello, Lisa. Let's hear what Amber's characters say to each other. I trust you'll take care of Tom. He's feeling a bit sad today. Can I speak with your mum? Yes, Mrs Smith, I'll get her for you right now. Mum! Mum, can you come here? Mrs Smith wants to speak with you! Come on, Tom, let's go up to my room and play. Tom follows Lisa to the bedroom. I'm going to read you my liking story. Close your eyes and imagine. A long time ago in Scandinavia, there were two gangs of Vikings, the eagles and the bears. Oh, nice scene change. Oh, help! The Vikings are going to attack us! Lisa! No. Why not? We're going to die. I'll have to fight them myself. No, Tom. These Vikings are good. These are the eagles. We're going to help you defeat the grizzly bears. Last scene. The eagles fight the bears <laughs> at the trap. <laughs> Amber's play is fantastic, isn't it, Mousy? Yes, it is, Larry. And let's remember why. Amber wrote her play in scenes, so that the story moves from one exciting part to the next. And there was lots of action. Lots of things happened on the stage. And the characters talked. 
and listened to, to each, each other. other. Oh, Mousy, I'm so glad we talk and listen to each other. Most of the time. I wouldn't have it any other way, Larry. <laughs> oh. Happy playwriting. And remember, we're, we're the, the Writing, writing Rescuers. <laughs> yes, well, I think you're right. Good night, you've written this play. I know, and I love listening to your